Guys, I got to be honest. This feels like cheating. Going from idea to holding this project in my hand, it seems unfair. This is the third and final video in this series showing you the fastest and easiest way to achieve success with CNC. A link to all three videos is in the description. So if you haven't watched the first two yet, I highly recommend checking them out. Let me show you what this machine is capable of. So if you're new to CNC or just looking for a quick and easy project, cutrocket.com is a gold mine that you have to check out. It's packed with pre-made CNC projects you can literally download and run on your machine. No designing, no fuss, just straight to cutting. Right now, the site supports Carbide Create, Vectric, and Fusion 360 projects. That means any project created in those programs can be uploaded and shared through CutRocket. The best part, it's completely free to use, and if you're working in these programs, you're encouraged to upload your own projects and share with the community. I found this awesome Lego man tray on CutRocket.com, which is perfect for showing off what the ShapeOco 5 Pro can do. The toolpaths are already set up, so all you have to do is download it, load it into Carbide Create, and send it to the machine. One thing I love about ShapeOco is how streamlined the project setup is. Homing the machine, automatic. Setting the workpiece zero, super simple. And the hybrid table gives you endless ways to secure your material. It's like this machine was designed to make life easier. Starting with the material, I picked up this pine stair tread from Lowe's. It's one inch thick and 36 inches long. Since my tray is about 60 inches tall, I'll be able to get two trays out of this one $15 piece of material. For work holding, I'm using double-sided tape along with a few essential clamps as fixtures to help with alignment. Double-sided tape works great here because of, of my material thickness. Thicker materials require longer bolts for these particular clamps, which I don't have yet. But I'll dive deeper into my work holding setup in future videos. Also, not just any double-sided tape will do. Be sure to check out the material list in the description of this video for the tape I recommend and all the other supplies I use for this project. Now let's take a look at the toolpaths and bits I'm using. First, I've got a pocketing toolpath set to a max depth of a half an inch. To keep things simple, I'm just using one bit for this project, a quarter inch downcut bit. The second toolpath is a profile cut done with the same exact quarter inch bit, cutting all the way through the material to a depth of one inch. Total machining time is going to be about 20 minutes. That's it. One bit, two toolpaths, let's get started. Look at this, it's cutting perfectly right out of the gate. No tweaking, no guesswork. I feel like I should be doing more, but the workflow with the ShapeOco 5 Pro makes it so easy. And just like that, we're done. Let's take this off the machine and see how it turned out. Guys, I gotta be honest, this feels like cheating. Going from idea to holding this project in my hand almost seems unfair. I just picked a file, set up my material, and bam, a really cool project is being carved right in front of me. This is what CNC success looks like. You're probably thinking, that's cool, but can I add my own touch to it? Absolutely, let me show you how. Okay, so I'm here in Carbide Create with the original file I downloaded from CutRocket. I'm gonna make four really simple but effective changes. First, let's change the overall size. I wanna make a smaller version of the Lego man tray. Let's see how this looks. Second, I'm swapping out the pocketing toolpath bit for a bowl and tray bit. This will add a quarter inch radius to the inside bottom edge of the tray because the bit itself has the same radius. Yeah. Third, I wanna add a name to personalize this tray. This will add another toolpath and another bit, a V carving toolpath with a 60 degree V groove bit. The trick here is to set the start depth to a half an inch, which matches the bottom of our tray. Fourth, we're adding some color. Just a little simple spray paint can go a long way to really make this tray pop. Even the design on this tray is more complex. The machine time is actually cut in half from 20 minutes on the first Lego Man to 10 minutes on this one. And that's it, four easy tweaks to really customize this tray and make it our own. This is a really good strategy because you're leveraging the base design that's already set up for you. It saves you a ton of time and helps you get comfortable 
with file creation. Downloading pre-made files is the simplest way to successfully create your first CNC projects. But you don't have to stop there. It's 100% possible to develop the skills to design your own projects from scratch. The best way to learn, start with pre-made files, study how they're set up, and tweak them to make them your own. So what do you think? Is using pre-made files really cheating? Because skipping the design process and toolpath setup feels like cheating. But honestly, it's just smart time management. Drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts on this strategy. And hey, if you've been following the series, thanks for sticking with me. This was the final video in my CNC success series. But if you missed the first two videos, don't worry, I've got them in a playlist for you. Just click right here and watch the full journey from beginner to success. And if you wanna see what else this machine can do, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I've got some really big projects coming up that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.